The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, folks, here we are. Up in the screaming market to the upside. We're looking at the NASDAQ here this morning, folks. Uh, this is a daily chart, and, of course, we are way into new high ground. You can see we shattered all the records here, and now we're starting to keep going higher and higher. We have a, an objective up here. We're within about uh, 70 points of the first small ABCD, but we have another larger ABCD, it is up here at 77.35, and given the bullishness that's going on, it's going to be real interesting when we hit this. Now, as you see this larger pattern unfolding right here, there's going to be two things to watch. The first one will be this butterfly pattern. It's going to be coming in right there within about 70 points today, and the way the market's acting today, I doubt if that's going to stop it, especially on a Friday. It's going to be hard for anybody to want to be a seller with the market being this strong, for heaven's sakes. I wouldn't sell it. <laughs> well, I probably would. But anyway, if I did, I would probably put a stop in. But anyway, we've got some real interesting cycles coming up here uh, on Monday, the uh, 22nd, which we fund our guest that day will be Norm Winsky of uh, – Astro Cycles out of, uh, excuse me, Cycles Research. Wait, Cycles Research is Bill Meridian, and Astro Research is um, Norm Winsky. Anyway, this is what we're, my old company used to be called Astro Cycles. But anyway, this is the uh, number we're looking at. It's only about 70 points away. It might stop it, but frankly, you know, it's pretty hard to say that you're going to do that. When you look at all these mega stocks, uh, in the newsletter last week, I pointed that they hadn't quite made a top yet, but this will be an interesting spot. You know, we like ABCD patterns. This, this is one of them. So you're coming in at this level right here, which is, let's just share this with the folks here for a second. And you'll see that number as 17, let me get it, it's 17414. It's about 80 handles, 17414. Yeah, it's eight. Uh, yeah, it's 80 handles from where we are right now, 7730. And you look at this on a smaller time frame. Let's go to a 60 minute. It looks like a rocket ship. And as you can see it right here, a little bit easier. The pullback that we had here on the 17th, you'll see that pulled right back to the 50% retracement of this move. Let's just clean these out for quick purposes here. And we'll see here's where we were. There was our move here. There was a big uh, sell-off, <laughs> and it was, but it stopped right at the 50% level within a heartbeat, and now we're heading up, and that takes us to this number right there, which is 17471. That's 80 handles from where we are right now. Now, those of you that follow uh, trade what you see in the programs that we do, I want to just show you a couple things here for short-term trading. This was yesterday's move. This was the big sell-off that we had yesterday. Look at where it stopped, folks. From your low to your high, it stopped exactly at the 382 retracement. Now, we had a small retracement here. Let's just see if that happened today. I don't think that it did because it's such a small pullback. But as you pull it up, you'll see uh, it didn't even come close to the 382 this time. So you'd have to count this one also because there's a smaller move right there. Okay, and that's going to get you pretty much at that same price up here. Which is one seven? There it is. Yep, one seven four seven one. And uh, there's three things right there. Now, this is a very small pullback, but if you're looking at pullbacks, this is a pullback. This is a pullback. This is a pullback. This is an hourly chart, folks. So this took five hours for that little pullback in the middle of the day here, or middle of the night last right last night. And this was, you know, right when we were on the show Friday, uh, Thursday show, we had that pullback right here when the Dow got down to uh, the S and P got down to 40, uh, 47 seventy, and then it took off to the uh, to the moon, and it's still going to the moon. This is going to be a real interesting one, folks, because of this 
pattern right here. You see this 1.618 expansion number? <laughs> that's a big number. So that's going to be two numbers up here at 17471. And in, in retrospect, I would say it would have to be a seller up in that area right here, risking about 40 points. But God, this thing is so wild, you can't trade it for less than $800, which is which is 40 points. So let me check here with the TFNN to see if we have uh, our friend Mr. Bill Meridian on the line yet. I can't see. Oh, Bill, you got to tell me that he's there. Bill, I'm very sorry. Take over, my friend, please. Okay. Bill Meridian, folks, Cycles Research. Let me turn off my machine here, and we'll be going. I they didn't. I didn't get the. Uh, anyway, you're back on business, buddy. Please fire away with what you got, okay, pal? Okay. First of all, can you see my screen? I believe we're. I believe we're in good business with the screen. I really do. I think so. Anyway. Hold on just a second here. Okay. Yeah, I think we're okay. No, we're not. Well, first, uh, I, we're not seeing your screen as yeah. of yet, Bill. Something, something's wrong. So if you uh, try to, we'll try to get well, that fixed. The internet here in Austria is very slow the last two oh, okay. or three days. Okay. Well, do what we can. Anyway, if not, we'll uh, we'll uh, talk. A high was expected in uh, in January, and things looked good until Thursday, yesterday. And um, first of all, the bullish 15-month cycle that begins the midterm election is dissipating. That's gone as of January 1st. January 3rd is a natural turning point. Paul McRae Montgomery used to use that when the Earth hits um, perihelion. January 8th was a top in the 1-4 10-year cycle. January 11th, the bullish seasonality ends from the end of the month in December, and it was a top of the dynamic S&P cycle, January 16th. And on top of that, Barron said a 2024 market outlook that is largely, <clears throat> largely um, bullish. Can you see the screen yet? Uh, let me check with TFN. I'm hold on one second, and I'll tell you. We got it now. We're ready to go. It says uh, you're where you're live. Okay. Well, this was the 2023. Uh -huh projection of the one four in the 10 year cycle again the one year cycle is the annual cycle of the year the four year cycle is the election year cycle and the 10 year cycle is the decennial pattern and it did show this this uh, decline actually it began in late july it began over here not over here and uh, it did bottom right on q here october 27th and we did have a strong q4 and that was Q4, I blew this up so you could see it. It did catch the low or it did catch the high or did catch the subsequent November, December rally. Here we move into 2024. Again, we have the one year cycle, the annual cycle of the year, the four year is called the election year cycle, and the 10 year is the decennial pattern. And the summation is down here. We were at a peak a few days ago. So according to this summation, we should have a decline into February. And here we have blown it up. So you can see where we are right now. Right now we are about in here. So I'll talk about the short term in a minute. Uh, I just want to get through this. And uh, here you see the S&P is probably now above that. Is it above the 4,800 level right now, Larry? I can't see the market. Yes, it is. The, well, the, the futures are certainly are. They're 4,850. Okay. But uh, I'm sure the cash okay. is too. Stay with Bill Meridian here, folks. We'll be right back. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. 
and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors are you ready to take your trading to the next level introducing tom o'brien's award-winning newsletter market insights your key to successful active trading tom o'brien renowned for his expertise in the financial markets has designed market insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades tom publishes his daily market insights newsletter every market day before the market open along with updates when warranted stay ahead of the game with tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out market insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. NN.com. Call now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 873 7618. Okay, folks, we're back with Bill Meridian Cycles Research. Bill, please continue. Yeah. So it looks like we've broken out of this little consolidation today. Let's go to the weekly S&P. And I'll, it's the weekly S&P up at the top, it's the same same graph. And the um, the red line is the this remember, this is weekly. So we're overbought weekly. This is the advanced decline line 10 day moving average again overbought. And that is the raw cumulative AD line. Now, here's how. January looks for three from three different perspectives. All months of 59.1% of the time for an average gain of 84 basis points. In election years, it's up 71.4% of the time for an average change of 2.1%. Year ending at a four, up 76.9% for a 2.2% gain. If you have both of the prior conditions, then you're up 67% of the time for an average change of 1.1%, but that's only six cases. So overall it looks uh, good for january setup also if the uh, prior quarter was strong these numbers improve again and that is what the s p looks like and no that has to be that has to be the dow that's mislabeled but right now we are at the 19th and so we are right in here so Rest of the month picks up end of the month strength, which begins on Tuesday. And there is the 2024 monthly histogram, but it's based on all election all uh, election years, which are years ending in four, of which there are only six. So it shows a strong January, a weak February, and you can see the rest of the year, the second half of the year. So from 
thus far, what I've concluded that was that if we have a strong January, we're probably going to tank in, in February and probably make a low in early March and then start rallying again. So that is the dynamic cycle. Now, that is the updated this morning, and that is the latest numbers being taken into a sine wave program and run, run through several tests, and this is what it comes up with. This is based on the S&P 500 from 1980. So we have the 1 4 10 year cycle at a high. We've got this at a high. And here, the, now, this is, this is where it gets very interesting. This is a relative strength measure, RSV. Technology is number one. Communication service is number two. Financials are number three. Healthcare is number four. And energy is down there at the bottom in last place. Now, this is the technology had a two big years. It had a down year. And it's had one big year last year. And this is probably the second big, big year because I just can't run any screens that are very bearish on technology and i'll say the strength in in the sector is based in semiconductors but not in all semiconductors i'm an owner of intel and um nvidia and i think intel is actually the strongest stock in that sector so there's been uh, a baton of leadership that's been passed to microsoft and apple i sold because their relative strength versus the rest of the group wasn't good and i held everything else okay and energy I just don't own, and I'm looking for shorts. So this is, according to my number one ranking system, the strong stocks in the S&P 500. You can see Intel's number one. Cardinal Health is number two. I think PVH is Van Heusen, close. PTC used to be called Parametric, and it was PMTC on the NASDAQ. They do CAD CAM software if you're an engineer. Western Digital is the last stock I bought. It was just coming off of a low base. Then you have Eaton and Parker Hannafin. I, Costco, which I've owned all along. So these stocks pass two screens. Number one is relative strength, and number two is seasonality. And Intel comes in number one. It's been strong all along. And now here's, here's something new, Larry. You haven't seen this before, the SIN index. This is um, eight stocks equally weighted that are in alcohol, tobacco, gaming, or sex. <laughs> and you'll notice you'll notice it rose 12% versus 23% for the S&P. So it's lagged the S&P on the way up. Then on the way down, it was minus 20% versus minus 10% for the S&P. And now it's about even with the <clears throat> S&P since the low in October. So I don't know what to make of this. Do people are, I don't think people are getting more chaste and religious. I think they don't have the money to go gaming or drinking and so forth. Okay. So Makes again, sense. that's eight eight stocks, two gaming, two alcohol, two tobacco, two sex, which is internet. They host the internet dating sites. Now here's the Cycles Research Woke Index. These are seven or eight stocks like um, Budweiser, Cracker Barrel, Target that are considered to be woke. And you'll notice they dropped 20% in the correction versus 10% for the S&P, but that's when they were getting all the negative publicity. Since October 27th, they're up 27% versus 16% for the S&P. So the lesson here is the when it got down near the lows, this index, people began to realize that the fundamentals hadn't changed, that the uh, stocks had been artificially depressed, that Disney was still Disney, whether you like what they produce or not, and Target was still Target whether you, you agree with their policies, their earnings power hadn't been damaged at all. And so this is a classic case of a, a rumor or bad publicity dropping a stock, or in this case stocks, and they rebounded right away. Now I'll get into some specific stocks. During, during earnings reporting time, stocks are more volatile. I mean, you know that from common sense. You also know that because there have been many PhD articles in the Financial Analyst Journal. And in terms of cycles, when the cycles turn up, whether it's a daily cycle that would normally lead to, let's say, a half a percent gain in a week, if they report earnings and the earnings are positive and the cycle's pointing up, it's not going to be 0.5 percent. It's probably going to be two or three. So that's where these come from. So Starbucks, 
uh, reports on January 30th. Uh, I've already won the cycles, they point down. And if we look for technical confirmation, the green line is the relative strength. The top strip is daily. It's closing price in black, momentum in blue, and relative strength in green. Then if you go down to the lower left, you see the weekly chart. Notice the divergence, the lower high in momentum, and see we can see that the relative strength has hit a new low weekly. Then if we go over to the monthly, you see a divergence. Not that the monthly is going to play a big part, a momentum divergence. So this is one stock that I'm looking to short on just before January 30th. And oh, there is the cycle. I didn't realize I had put it in here. But um, you'll note, when does that cycle, when do they report the 30th? When does this thing top right around the 30th? That's the monthly. So here, without all of the details, here are my earnings per share surprise trades for the last part of this month. Uh, long IBM and Meta and short Tesla and Netflix. So okay. if we show up, Starbucks also belongs in there. So there are three shorts and two longs. Okay, stay with us, Bill. we got to pay a few bills. Bill Meridian yep. Cycles Research. The inner Austria will be right back with us, folks. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, we're 
we're back, folks, with Bill Meridian of Cycles Research. Bill, please continue. Yeah, oops. Yeah, so those, the stocks I'm long looking for earnings surprises are IBM, Meta, Tesla, Netflix, or uh, the, well, Tesla and Net Netflix are both shorts, as is Starbucks. Now, oil, I've been doing well trading oil. That's where the indicators have been working the best. The ones that I use are cycles and projected turning points. It's in its strong seasonal period. You can see that right there. That uh, January has tended to be flat. February, a little stronger. March, a little stronger. And April, the strongest. And then it tapers off. And right at the moment, let me see what the next slide is. So this is the monthly oil cycle. So I believe we've got a trade coming up here. I believe it is the Monday through into February. I believe we, this is not a bad pattern. This is uh, looks like a, a triangular pattern. So it is a consolidation pattern. And so I am looking to buy oil probably Monday. I believe it is a turning point Let's be just check and be sure. Yeah, the 23rd. So the buy point would be the 22nd. And I'm looking for a rally into the end of the month on oil. Do you, goal, use the, well, Bill, do you use the futures when you do this? Is that what you use or do you do an ETF? That's, that's a, oh, uh, I use uh, the ETFs. They are double long and double short, the gold price. Okay. I think it's... SCO and UCO. Okay. And with gold, well, gold has uh, seasonally, January is a strong month, but it hasn't been this January. And as you can see, the cycle is rising. And I believe we hit a turning point yesterday. So I think for the rest of the month, gold is rising. Because mm. I had the dollar is strong, and it's always hard to judge, uh, you know, Theoretically, whenever the dollar goes up, gold should go down and vice versa. It doesn't always do that. But uh, I think the dollar is at a little top or a little correction for the next week. So I think gold should rally. And let me also say that I think there is so much economic uncertainty. That is what is driving Bitcoin and gold because they are uh, non, they're not paper, but they're financial assets. Uh -huh. And I think people are fleeing the banking system, sensing some problems in the, in the future. Uh -huh. And my uh, the panic cycle, which I hadn't mentioned, actually uh, spikes up in March and then drops. So my original thought was that the market is going to top in the middle of January, come down, and then uh, either in late February or more, more likely in March, it is going to <clears throat> sell off sharply and then rebound and then probably rally into the spring. Okay. But this is the what gold looks like. And one of the big reasons, you look back in, in September – there was, on a monthly basis, there was a uh, hook buy signal. It went to a new low for the month and closed at a new high. And that was when uh, gold was lower than where it is now. I can't really read that uh, axis. I think that's around 1800 or 1900. 1830. And that is the monthly gold histogram. Okay. This... You'll notice January and February. Now, this is based on gold from 1861. That's 158 years worth of data. So March, no matter what data you look at, Larry, you probably notice this, March is always weak. Uh, January and February are strong, and you'll note that most of the first half is strong. But if you go back and look at the prices, uh, gold was uh, stronger, was less cyclical way back years ago. There wasn't much competition, and people didn't care too much about rates. Uh, you wanted uh, gold dollars, you know, to keep in your pocket right next to your six gun back in the old days. <laughs> so now real estate, I had a bunch of slides, you know, the last time I showed them. This is the only one I'm showing right now. U.S. new one-family houses sold annual meeting, annual median year-over-year year price change. Look, it's down where it was in the 70s. Wait a so, minute. Explain. That's not what we're seeing here. What do you mean? I don't understand this chart, Bill. This doesn't look right to me. Home prices are up. up that's they're blue, on the side up here. Well, this is 
U.S. new one family houses sold. This is oh, year okay. over year one price year, change. Okay. Year over year price change. This is okay, for the entire U.S. Okay, I got it's it. Percentage no, I change. Yeah. I got it. So, you know, the 18 year, I mentioned it numerous times, the 18 year real estate cycle is fairly regular. So, did, so to lots of other people, if you want to understand it, it's the secret life of real estate and banking um, by Phil Anderson is the book to read. And so I'm comparing this situation, and you probably will remember the 70s, Larry, in which rates went well over double digits. So I haven't shown bond. I just think rates are going up, period. And during that period, equity markets fell and the economy suffered. And once you sold stocks at a loss, the cash you got bought less than it did when you bought the stocks. So you had a loss in nominal dollar terms and a loss in purchasing power. So there was very real wealth destruction. Real estate went into a recession. You had a weak Democratic leader and conflict with Iran. So it looks very much like the 70s. And if you if you believe in a, let's say, we're 20, is it a 50-year cycle would take us back to the 70s? Then this would be the equivalent of around 1974. Okay, wow. Which was pretty – and also on a social level, there were lots of strikes, oh, riots. I crime. remember that. Yeah, lines for gasoline. And do you remember, remember what, that. Yeah. Do you remember what 42nd Street in New York looked like back then? It was mostly illicit massage parlors and theaters. Wow. And so the situation was one of overall deterioration. Yeah. And to show you what kind of an economy we have, this is – I watched the auction markets – there's plenty of money around to buy a rare 1914 Babe Ruth card for 7.2 million, which <laughs> is well off the record, which is 12.6 million for a Mickey Mantle card. Really? Have, a Mickey Mantle card sold North for 12 hand. million dollars? 12.6 wow. million, it's the all time record. That was last oh year. God. And here's bankruptcy filings, US Chapter 11 bankruptcy filings. Look at the. the Bottom 2021, 20, 2022, and they're going straight up. So, straight up. So, inflation, you have an out of control auction market and you've got people going bankrupt. You know, the inflation, another uh, uh, old line, you know, New Jersey's the state of the diners, and uh, another yeah. diner has just gone under because they can't keep up with the price increases. They can't yeah. hike the price of their food anymore. People will stay at home and eat. Yeah. So that's the type of situation we're in. And now we have to salute any, anybody who's correct. Dow 36,000 by Glassman and Hassett. I forget how long ago this book was put out, but no, it was put out time. so long I, ago that I forgot I remember, about it. It's over 40 years. Uh, I can tell you that. I remember that book. Because the Dow okay. was trading, well, Dow was trading under 1,000 when they brought that thing out. As yeah, I of course. I doubt, I don't think anybody believed it then, and uh, they, they don't remember now. Yeah, we'll take a hell of a sell off to get it now. <laughs> hey, let's stay with uh, Bill Meridian, folks. We'll be right back. 877 927 6648. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? 
Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Okay, we're back, folks. We're speaking with Bill Meridian, Cycles Research. Please continue, my friend. Well, if you have any questions, that's, um, that's you know what I that we say. You we've been friends questions? almost 50 years. Did you know that? It's been a long time, huh? Um, <laughs> no, when did we meet? In the early 70s? Uh, we met in 78, in 79. 78 or 79. Yeah, that's when we first met. Okay. I think, uh, I know you were living in New York at that time, I believe. Bill, we, I've got yes. a couple questions here. But overall, when you're uh, tell the folks how what cycle program do you use to find these different cycles and things that you're using? That's the first question that someone asks. Well, I, I had my own constructed because I wasn't satisfied with what anyone else had. So, <laughs> okay, <laughs> is it similar to what Alfie has done? I mean, uh, that type of work. No. Alfie Lavoy. Okay, that's that, that's the second question. The second question: What is your favorite thing to trade? If you had to just pick one thing, what would you like to trade? That comes from Wichita, Kansas. The question. Well, number one is S and P, and number two is oil. Okay. And the, the, the reason for the S and P is you, you'll remember the name Arthur Merrill. He wrote Behavior of Prices oh, on Wall gosh, Street. Yes. Yep. And that was one of the first books I read, and it told me that the S&P is cyclical and um, he brought my attention to the, the annual cycle of the year and uh, our late friend Richard Mogi, who was head of the Foundation for the Study of Cycles in the 90s. And I said, Richard, to, uh, it, tell me if I've, if I've got this right, but it seems like whenever you analyze a new market, you should always start with the annual cycle. And he said, that's right. And so I always call it the great modulator. And that yeah. is what Arthur Arthur brought my attention to that, and the, I've done a lot of optimization work on his end of the month strategy and, and the Federal Reserve days, and there are the OPEX days, option expiration, and then there are, as the end of the month, I mentioned the holidays, and I started working with that. And oil is because the, well, oil is, I only have daily prices from 83. I'm, it's hard to believe that nobody's got any prices earlier than that. I think someone does yeah. somewhere. But because I was down in uh, the Middle East for 13 years, and I'm due to go down there again soon, the uh, price of oil is always sticking in my mind. And so some of the tools I use are very good for oil. And it was um, Paul McRae Montgomery that said 
the problem with the stock market, as I think W. D. Gann wrote, was that you could get some cycle occurring and it might be a sector or just a certain group of stocks and not the overall indices that move. But if you get an indication on gold or oil, there's only one gold, there's only one oil, there's only one wheat, there's only one copper, that makes it a bit easier. And because I had a career in stocks, that's why I'm sort of not stuck there, but you know, I, I look for another market to trade and oil makes very big moves. And I was, let's see, long, short, and long, three correct trades, which is hard to do in oil. And I began to feel like I was getting a little too lucky. And uh, I looked at the oil price back when I sold the last position. I said, it doesn't appear to have much to fall, maybe 69 or 70. And so do I want to risk trading it, especially since, as I already pointed out to you, the oil cycle is bottoming this month. So it seems to me you should keep your powder dry, not try and short it, and trade from the long side from here through April, which is what I am planning to do. So I hope that answers the question. Okay. Now the next question that comes to us, do you remember a couple of years ago when oil went negative during that Singapore thing that was going on? This, sure did. Yeah. This, that, that aberration like that, does that affect – your work that you're doing, or I know you were bearish at that time, but I don't think you think it was going to go negative twenty six dollars. <laughs> what, what's no, your feeling um, on that? Yeah. Well, the answer to the question is it looks awfully funny when I bring the uh, chart up and you look at you know it has created those for the average month in any year. There's a huge drop on that day caused by only one day, and so you have to keep that. The answer is it perturbs the work that I do. But I've got to keep it in mind that if you see, you know, this huge drop, you say, well, that was that one day. And you sort of, you know, fill in the blanks, you know, you sort of, you know, uh, discount it as far as its importance. Okay. So, yes, it's a perturbation, but you just have to uh, you just have to live with it and just realize that uh, the market is not that bearish at that time of the year. Okay, that's great. Well, listen, I want to thank you for joining us today, and we'll have you on again soon. Stay warm over there. Spring is coming, not too far away. Okay, I'll do that. Okay, Bill, thank you very much for joining us, folks. Bill Meridian Cycles Research. Oh, one, uh, how do folks reach you if they'd like to take a yep. sample of your newsletter, Bill? What would be the best way? Well, they can just send me an email at bill at cyclesresearch.com. Okay, my friend, thank you very much for joining us, and uh, okay. we'll have you on again soon. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. All right. You bet. Okay, let's take a quick look here at some of these things that are going on in the market, folks. Let me uh, put the charts up so we can see we've reached that first objective already in the uh, NASDAQ that we were talking about 15 minutes ago. Hold on just a second. We'll get this up here and be able to take a quick look at it. There we go. Now, the NASDAQ is almost there right now. This is a daily, and we are within a heartbeat of it. As you can see, we are very, very close. There's where we are right now. Uh, there's the yeah, – we're almost there. It's just about uh, – well, what I have to do is get rid of that red thing out of the way. And there it is at 47409. Uh, oh, it's just like the Beach Boys. So, yeah, 47409. So we're 30 points away of that one. With this strength like this, high probability that we're going to get up here 7730, especially like I mentioned, it's really hard to sell uh, stocks on a, on, a, on an up week in a market running like that. They, those boys on Wall Street, uh, they uh, do not like to go short over the weekend when the market's going straight up. So we'll look at it in a different way when we watch this on Monday. Now, one other thing that happened during the day, we've had a pretty big move. I, ha I have to show this because this was, to me, the most amazing thing that happened. We've had a tremendous move in gold this morning, folks. It got all the way up to uh, 30, uh, to 2041 was the high. Now, I want you to see the silver chart. You're not going to believe this. Look at this, folks. Silver did not take out the 382 of this whole move when gold was up here. In fact, it was above there. 
I mean, that's that's uh, we talk about an aberration of something that's really uh, this is a sign of weakness, folks. That to me, I I'm totally shocked that we could not get above that level. I put it in the video last night, and it stayed there. It stayed there for one, two, three, four, five, six hours, not going higher than twenty two ninety five to 2298 and then it broke all the way down to 2259 that's not a bullish sign this is a 786 but there's still not a bullish sign so one of the trades that i want to be watching get this back here to a little say a smaller time frame is to look for a 382 retracement on this because this is bullish in pattern in my opinion oh my gosh we hit it i didn't even realize we just hit it at 74 shut the front door and raise the rent I'll be doggone. We sure did. Anyway, watch this one, folks. It's going to be interesting. Let's take a break here. 877-927-6648. Stay tuned for Ben Bernanke. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, folks, I just want to highlight the last uh, 
24 hours in the S and the Dow Jones E mini, we had that big sell off, well, small sell off down here at 37.30. Then we had the big run up, and you notice that it stopped right at the 382 retracement here today. You can see the ABCD pattern that we have going right here. You're looking at this number right here, 38053. That's going to be an easy one to hit. Now, folks, here's what's important from my perspective. This is what's happened this week. We have completed this huge A, B, C, D pattern right here. A, we're going to draw it in because this is worth the price of admission, in my opinion. There's your A, B, C, D leg right here. And this morning, early this morning, if you remember, we had that high come in, and that was right at, and we brought, we dropped 250 Dow points, and now we've come back. That was sitting right at, you'll, you'll be able to see it, there it was, but right between the 61 this one was right at the 78% level, right there. You'll see they're both coming in. There's your 78% level. That made this a 135 pattern. We dropped 250 points, and then we've gone straight up. That tells us that there's a very strong probability, given where the NASDAQ is, we could be looking at a Dow Jones easily up here at 38,229. Folks, that's only 250 points. We could be there at a quarter to three. You know, this is a, this is not a market you want to try to sell. So it's going to be close, but we're going to be ready when it does happen. But right now, that's not happening. So let's remind ourselves of that. Now, Bill Meridian said we want us to be buyer of crude oil. Let's take a look at the boy. Look at these bonds. They just don't have any friends at all. My goodness. Okay, here is the crude oil. Let's get it up here on the hourly chart so we can get something that's tradable. And here's where we are. We're, we had the ABCD. You can see now we're pulling back to the 61% retracement of this move, and you want to see what the 382 of this move is, and it's setting right there right now, folks. That's what we're looking at. Uh-oh. We'll be right back, folks, on Monday, so stay tuned. Norm Winsky will be our guest. May God bless.